Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to show you how to use the picture tag in order to auto resize the images in your HTML documents. Now, one of the very useful things with HTML documents is when you write out text, uh, whether you're using headings tags or the P tags or whatever else, basically the text auto reformats itself uh, based off of the screen that you're viewing the text in. Uh, so if you're uh, trying to read text on a very large screen, the text will go out and it'll fill out that very large screen. If you're trying to read the exact same text on something like a mobile phone browser, everything will shrink down and all of the lines resize themselves so that you can easily read the text on the screen. Uh, so that's a very useful thing and that's just built into how HTML works. One of the problems you run into though is when you deal with images, basically when you deal with pictures on your HTML documents, because by default with HTML4, uh, those images don't resize. And so basically, if you shrink down and you're using, a, let's say, a, a smartphone screen in order to view uh, some type of HTML document and you don't have any way to resize the image, you're going to have this weird, like, massive image and this text and everything's going to be kind of doesn't really work out how you want it to. Uh, and so what is very useful is there's something called the picture tag that allows you to resize the images on that are basically being displayed to your visitors who are viewing your HTML document based off of the size of the screen. So what you can say is at a minimum width, I want this image to be displayed. If the if the uh, the width of the screen is smaller than that, then I want this image to be displayed. And if the 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 uh, screen size is even smaller than that, I want this image to be displayed. So by using the picture tag, you're able to uh, change what image is being seen based off of the 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 size of the display your viewer is using to to view the HTML document. And so this makes it a lot easier to create documents that can be viewed uh, on any number types of screen. Size. So today we're going to be showing you how to use this picture tag. So in order to use the picture tag, you are going to need to have a little bit of artistic skill, just a tiny bit of artistic skill. That's right, you're gonna to have to be able to open up your original image uh, in some kind of image, image editing software and then essentially save that image as multiple smaller versions of itself. So with most uh, image software, what you can do is you can simply open up the original image, you can adjust the image size, uh, and then once you've done that, then you would save uh, that image under a different name, then you would adjust the size even smaller, save it under a different name, adjust it even smaller if you want, save it under a different name, so on and so forth and then when we use the picture tag what we'll do is we'll reference these different image files that you've created based off of the size that you have specified um, basically within the picture tag so with that let's go over to the computer and I can show you how this works here we are back at my demonstration computer. Um, again, I'm using a MacBook Pro, so I'm using text edit in order to write this HTML, uh, but all you need is an ASCII text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. In the Mac world, you use text edit. In the Linux world, you can use gedit, uh, vim, nano, whatever it is that you want. Uh, the main thing to remember is always when you save the file, make sure the extension is .htm or .html so that when your computer goes to open it up, it will know to open it up with your default web browser. So before we get to this HTML, HTML code though, I do want to go over and take a look at the images and just kind of show you what I did in order to create the images that will be displayed. So we actually are going to be referencing three different images uh, in this picture tag. And so the first thing that I was dealing with is this is the original picture. So uh, basically I can open this with uh, Paint. So I use this thing called Paint S. I think it's very good uh, software to do basic editing with. And basically I can open this up. And the issue that we're dealing with here is that this is a very large uh, picture. So basically, uh, as you can see, it's a 4,500 uh, by 2,877 pixel picture. So if I simply try to embed this into my website, it would just be a mess. It would just 
be really, really, really big and just be a pain in the butt. And so what you can do is you can simply go up to image and you can do adjust size. And then when you do that, again, whatever software you're using, whether you're using Adobe Illustrator or something like that, you will always have something along these lines. Uh, so you go up there, you can adjust the image size. You make sure that the scale proportionally is checked off and then here you can simply put in you know what size you want the image to be so uh, so instead of being 4500 pixels I can simply put this to 800 pixels it's, again since it's scale proportionally it'll automatically figure out what the height should be and then you can hit OK and so what you do is you do that and then you simply go to file save as and then you plug in what you want the name of this image to be that you're going to reference. So what I did was I created a picture 700, I created a picture like 400, and then what I did is I simply then clipped out like a little picture of me here, and then I saved that as picture 200. So that is where uh, basically you're going to have to be resizing the images that you're going to be using in this particular example uh, then past that we can simply go over and actually take a look at the picture tag that I created uh, and as with all this stuff it's pretty simple uh, so we're going to open up the picture tag and then the first thing that we're going to say is we're going to say what the largest image we want to be able to be viewed is so what we're going to say is source media equals and this is a bit of a this is a bit of a code mess, but we're going to do uh, double quotation marks, parentheses, then we're going to say minimum, hyph hyph minimum hyphen width, min hyphen width, uh, colon, then we're going to say space, and then we're going to say what what this when this large image should be displayed. So as long as the window size is above 900 pixels, so we put 900 px here, you can put 910 px, you can put 1000 px, again, you can put 600 px. Basically, again, play with it, figure out what you want. So what we're saying is as long as the window width is a minimum of 900 pixels, then we're going to close all that, then we're going to say src set so we're going to be setting the src equals double quotation marks then we're going to put what the path to the image is so period forward slash means in the same folder as this particular document we want to look for the picture 700.jpg and so essentially if the the width of the window is at least 900 pixels we want you to display picture 700.jpg uh, source media then we're going to say minimum hyphen width 600 pixels so if the window is between 600 pixels to 900 pixels we want a uh, picture 400.jpg to be displayed and then the final thing that I have down here actually works in two fashions. So if you're dealing with a very old web browser that does not understand the picture tag, this is a standard image SRC tag as we've dealt with in the past. So if the web browser does not understand a picture tag for whatever reason, it will simply display this image. So IMG SRC equals and then picture 200. Or, or conversely, and what's more important with this picture tag, is basically if the width of the window is below 600 pixels, this is the thing that will be displayed. So basically, if, if the window size is smaller than the smallest size that you've defined, this is the image that will be displayed. Then finally, we close the picture tag, and then I just created this whole little word soup right here using the P tag, just to show you basically as the HTML document uh, grows and shrinks that now, both the text and the image will grow and shrink with it. So with that, let's go over and actually take a look uh, at, at the, uh, the document in an actual web browser. So I can double click on picture.html. And so when I double click, so now this is the largest size. So we can see this is the large image. So this is the picture of 700.jpg. And we can see all the text is one one line. Now as I go and I slowly start shrinking, so as I shrink there, now we can see that the text is shrinking and I hit, I hit, so I'm now at, at least below, I'm below 900 pixels in size, still above 600 pixels in size. So now we can see that the image has now shrunk. Then if I keep shrinking, 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 again, the words are shrinking. And then when I get to a certain point, we now get to that smallest image. So again, when the web browser was above 900 pixels, web browser is above 900 pixels. We get to see the largest image. 
when the web browser goes below 900 pixels, we then see the next image down. We see this a picture 400 JPG. And then as the web browser shrinks further, that's where we see the smallest image there, basically this image uh, SRC, and that's the picture 200.jpg. So now, not only does the text resize itself, but the image resizes itself too. Really, really pretty simple as long as you have a basic understanding of how the code works and you can, you know, you can muddle your way through an image editor. So now you know how to use the picture tag in order to resize your images uh, based off of the size of the web browser your visitor is using in order to view your website. So this is a very important component to something called responsive websites. So you may have heard of the concept of responsive websites and not really understood what it meant. Basically what responsive websites are is you have one code base and that is used to present your website to your visitors, to your viewers, regardless of what uh, size web Web browser they're using. So basically the code automatically reformats things uh, based off of the size of the web browser. So you can just simply create one code base and then whether somebody is using a desktop computer or an iPhone, uh, when they go to your website, everything will auto adjust for them. This is not how it used to be. Again, if you go back 10 years ago to the old days when iPhones were still new and tablets were still new, uh, one of the problems that people had is again, Again, for things like images, uh, they didn't, they hadn't in the past really had to worry too much about resizing images. Everybody was going to a website more or less with a desktop or a laptop computer. Therefore, they were always using a large screen to view the website. So when mobile devices came on the market uh, back then, what people had to do was they actually had to create entirely different code bases for the different devices that would be viewing the website. So essentially, you would have a website built literally for smartphones and one built literally for uh, tablets and one built literally for uh, laptops and desktop computers. When a visitor went to your site, you would have some kind of script, possibly JavaScript, possibly PHP, something like that, that would determine what web browser you were using in order to view that site. And then it would redirect you to one of these three or four different in entirely built websites that have been created. Of course, that makes it a real pain in the butt as a website administrator because now you literally have multiple different websites that you have to maintain. You have to make sure when you change something on the smartphone website that it also gets changed on the desktop website, so on and so forth. So what's nice with now being able to have this picture tag is again, for things like images, you can simply have the image resize based off of the screen size. And so now you can have one code base for your website website you don't have to have you don't have to worry about basically multiple duplicate websites dealing with different uh, browser sizes uh, so that's essentially how the picture tag works and that's why it's important uh, as always I enjoyed uh, doing this class I look forward to seeing you at the next one if you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.